right so yesterday we uh, got introduced to something called as pipelining hazards and we discussed something called as pipelining structural hazard we understood what exactly was a hazard and how a hazard can be damaging and in short i explained you a hazard is something which is going to stop your progress i am progressing fast and something is stopping me i can call it or i can term it a hazard and remember yesterday we spoke about structural hazard it is all about hardware related things when i have only one piece of memory and if i want two different stages to use it for two different instructions it is going to be a hazard and it cannot be done that's what we dealt in the last discussion for yesterday and also we took some example where we understood that a normal single cycle pipeline approach is going to be slower than a pipeline approach which is going to be faster pipeline approach is always going to be faster though the cycle wise stage wise time could seem to be a little higher it it is actually a better one so in the sense if the single stage wants 200 picoseconds and rest of the stage wants only 175 150 you will have to convert everything to 200 and but in the case of non pipeline architecture the time required is based on each instruction and the instruction which requests the longest of the clock cycle should be the one that is to be used for all the instructions and i explained you this clearly i believe and i hope there are no queries in this and if you have queries we can discuss that as well right uh, the next thing that we need to go ahead is with understanding what is a data hazard this is very very important yesterday we learned what is structural hazard and now it is time for us to understand what exactly is data hazard this is another hazard and this is a very interesting hazard actually i'll take some cool examples and you can see that i have taken a trouser and a shirt here i'm going to take that as an example and we will understand how exactly this hazard is halting our progress any hazard is going to halt your progress any hazard is technically going to stall you so this hazard is no different and it is going to also stall you let's let's understand one thing very clearly here it is going to stop the pipelining from functioning it is going to stop the pipelining from doing its task that's what is called as hazard we'll take an example i am going to take a pair of matching trouser and a shirt these two are matching i believe and i am taking these two as an example right now now i wanted to get both of these washed Uh, dried and then ironed i need to press it properly for me to use it i have washed both now i am folding after the wash so that it can be ironed i see that the trouser is missing i have got a shirt and i have got a trouser the shirt is washed and it is now in the table for pressing i folded it i am searching for the trouser but i am not able to see the trouser and it is found missing so what will you do we cannot leave it as such right it is a matching dress and i will have to wear it as the match i cannot afford to go like that so what do we do until the match is found i mean i'll go to the washroom i'll find out where exactly the washing room uh, is available where exactly the clothes were washed i'll search if the uh, trouser is found there i'll see if somebody has mistakenly taken it from my uh, lot of work clothes that i have washed or did i drop it on the way i'll have to search i'll have to search until i get now what will happen is until the match is found the rest of the clothes could have been folded and ironed <coughs> they are supposed to wait until the time i find what has happened to the trouser i won't do the next thing which had to be done which could have been done ideally so i have got something in hand which can be done very easily but since the previous thing is not at complete the previous thing is not at completely available for me to say okay i am done i am stalling it this is called a delay this is called a hazard this has to be taken care of and i am not able to process i am not able to progress and that's what is happening here and that's called a hazard now we are going to make it technically and we need to understand how exactly the same thing works for instructions that are used in pipelining please remember this has to be taken as an instance and we need to draw the line of understanding for technical understanding so this cannot be taken just as the cloth washing example and explained in the exam i expect everybody to go on mute please go on mute right thank you now let's take some example i am going to take an example of an instruction and understand that i have got one instruction and this instruction has got dependency for the previous instruction and the first instruction i have got two instructions one and two this two can be run only if one is complete i repeat this two can be run 
only when one is complete if one is not complete this two cannot be run so i need the result of the first instruction for me to run the second instruction without which i cannot move forward this is a hazard this is called the data hazard the result of the first instruction is going to be fed in into the second instruction for it to process it is like you are having the raw materials like potato uh, maybe dal and other things available we need to mix all of these together to get a very good sambar if potato is not ready i let to wait for the potato to be available though i have dal and other things available when potato is not available i cannot make sambar so there is a dependency for the potato to be boiled completely so that i can add it in sambar and that is called as the data hazard the potato is the data here it is to be given from somebody else somebody is boiling it and giving you if they are not giving the potato though rest of the components are available you cannot process it that's called data dependency and that is a hazard that's a clear hazard so we need to avoid it and that's what we are going to discuss now is it clear the data hazard is caused by the instruction flow i have got multiple instructions the first instruction may need say about 10 seconds for it to run the second instruction may need 7 seconds for it to run but only when the first instruction is run the result available in the first instruction can be given to the second one if the result is available only after 10 seconds this guy has to wait until that this is a hazard so we need to overcome all these that's what we are going to learn and this kind of hazard is very important in pipelining that's what we are going to listen and that's what we are going to go step by step as per right i told you what technically is a data hazard here we will take an example of an instruction right now let's take the first instruction called add i am going to take up add instruction and the second instruction which is going to follow is called add immediate i am going to take up add mips instruction and add immediate is the next instruction now what is the instruction sir why is it dependent the first instruction is add dollar s1 comma dollar t1 comma dollar t2 now what will happen this t2 and t1 are to be added and it is to be given to s1 now add immediate is the next instruction i told you add immediate dollar s1 comma dollar s1 comma 5 now this result the register which has got the result in the first instruction is to be invoked here and with that another 5 has to be added so what will happen until this result is available this instruction cannot be executed so the result of the previous instruction is going to have a solid impact in the current instruction which is going to be run because the same register is getting used here remember it this is a very important point and we are going to draw this step by step also right do we have a solution sir yes when there is a problem there is always a solution i keep telling this in all my examples whenever there is a challenge there are solutions which are already made available and we can ourselves as well create a lot of solutions now what is this very simple let's understand we have got add first this is the problem statement followed by add immediate now what will happen the alu will compute the result for the add instruction first i have got the a register going here b register going here i will get the result now this result is available at the third stage what is the first stage the first stage is called instruction fetch the second stage is called a decode the third stage is called execute the fourth stage is called mem and the fifth stage is called write back normally we take the result from the write back and we write it into the register s1 or s2 as required that's what is the problem statement but we have the result available here itself why do you have to wait till these two stages to complete that's exactly the question that i'm going to throw at you and we are going to fix the problem using this idea what do we do very simple we are going to not wait for the last stage to complete in the pipelining the five stages are there what are they instruction fetch first stage instruction decode second stage execute third stage here is where you get the result the fourth stage is nothing but is going to be mem the fifth stage is write back for an add operation this is enough for me to take the result and it can be fed to the next instruction which is awaiting this result i wait for this but if i take only from here i may need to wait another few minutes or few seconds as per requirements and that's a hazard that's what we are trying to fix it is very simple i cook the potato the potato is all ready 
you need not polish it shine it and then present it in a very glamorous way for somebody to cook it once it is ready give it as such don't wait for the time until somebody comes and tests if the potato is all fine don't waste time there it's boiled it's steamed properly give it now the term that we are going to use here is called forwarding this is a very important term and remember it kids the term that we need to use towards sending the data once it is available for the next step to process is called forwarding this is very very important and we are going to use this term quite frequently from here on so this forwarding is not only forwarding the result but also it is bypassing the rest of the two stages if you see carefully stage 1 2 3 4 5 i forwarded the result from here which means i have bypassed this 4 and 5 isn't it i have also bypassed that's the most important point i just did not forward i have also bypassed the result which had to flow through a normal flow and i am taking it out and i am sending it to somebody so this is actually influencing i am influencing and i am forwarding the result which is available in front so if somebody asks you what is forwarding forwarding is taking the result once it is available at the execution stage instead of you waiting for the entire flow to be complete also it can be named as bypassing bypassing is called forwarding or forwarding is also known as bypass you can call it either way and this is very very important now let's take the same problem again add dollar s1 dollar t1 t2 t1 and t2 are added it goes to s1 and in the next sequence i add 5 to s1 that's all now please follow this input carefully i don't want you to leave it light this is the way you got to represent your diagrams from here on all the diagrams that i'm going to present are going to be like this so if should always be represented by a square which has got if written into it instruction decode should always be represented by a square and a sub square over it and the alu symbol we all know and it has to be highlighted like this and there is where the execution happens memory again a square right back in a so again a square remember it if you change this you won't get marks you won't get respect in the interview as well this is the pattern that we are requested to follow and this is the guideline this is like the rule that we need to follow so please stay with the rule wherever instruction fetch is to be represented draw a square and write if into it wherever it is decode you can put d id there but make a small square up before it and then you can see alu sign mem is a square wb is a square remember it i am going to use the same thing and we are going to get this consistently followed till the end of the course from here on this is going to be the pattern that we are going to use instead of we drawing a huge diagram instead of you drawing a very huge uh, data path diagram you can use this symbols to draw it and then to represent it very clearly am i clear till now all of you now as i told you we will have to go ahead and draw the sequence how are we going to draw sir very simple see that here i have got the add s1 t1 t2 what is the first stage if second stage id third stage execute that is alu fourth is mem fifth is wb assuming that we need the time frame to come to this stage i mean the last stage when will it come one you need 1 2 3 4 so 800 seconds is what you need 800 is the time frame that you need for you to come to this stage and this instruction the second one when it is coming to the stage id itself i need it so i will not have the result right now here so the problem is i have the data in hand but since it is not processed till the last stage i am not having it available for the next instruction add immediate this is called the data hazard how are we going to solve this sir very simple i'll tell you a simple way as i told you some time back it is called as forwarding or bypassing we know the result is available in our hand for the first instruction right after the alu stage the result is available exactly here the one that i am circling right here as the result so the moment alu spits out the result i have got the result available and i can use that result now what do i do very simple i will forward that result here you can see that here i will forward that result here to the next instruction and one input is available here and i can go ahead with the process 
because one input is the S1 value and another input is 5. 5 can be sent from this and the S1 value, the final result for the previous instruction is available here. I can add that and I can send it. This is called as bypassing or forwarding. The moment you have the result with additional hardware, this can be done. This cannot be done just like that. Please remember, this cannot be done just like that. This needs definitely some tuning, some modification, additional investments are required, but still this is possible. Now, there is another point that needs to be remembered. When R-type instruction follows the load, I have an R-type instruction which follows the load. Conditioned, condition is totally different. Last case, we had two R-type instruction, one R-type instruction, one I-type instruction. It is a bit easy for us to understand and to tackle it. But we need to handle R-type instruction following the load type instruction. We need to handle that as well. Now, what are we going to do? The first instruction is to be assumed as a load one. And then the second instruction is assumed as add one. Load and add are followed one after another. Now, what happens? The first instruction loads the register S1. I am going to load the register S1 with the cumulative content out from here. And I move it on to S1. S1 gets the result. Now, what do we do in the next instruction? I use that S1. Add dollar $t1, dollar $s1, dollar $s2. So, this S1 and S2 are important, and S1 is the one that we are getting from the load word. That's it. So, we are using the load instruction before the add instruction, and the result is stored in S1 for the load instruction. And the same S1 is used for the processing in add instruction. Now we got to make it clear. So how do we do it, sir? Very simple. This is going to be not easy because forwarding may not be possible. Why, sir? When you talk about R type instruction, the result was available right after the execution stage and I could forward it. But when you talk about the load word instruction, the result is available only here because you are finding the data from the memory location. I am trying to spot the data from this memory location and I pull out the data. That data has to be returned back to some memory called R1 or R2 or R3 register and your data is not available right after execution. Instead, it is available after memory stage. Remember, we are getting the result not after execution stage like add instruction and we are getting the result after the memory stage, which means I am taking the content out of the memory. Now, the first instruction is load word S1 32 of T0. I got the result into S1. My result is available exactly after the mem stage for me. Now, can I do this? You Do you think this is logical? Can I time travel? I cannot do a time travel and then I cannot draw the line in the reverse direction. Drawing the line in the reverse direction is absolutely not acceptable and that's a mistake. So what do we do? This has to be in the forward direction. I cannot push this in the backward direction because the time is done. I am already crossing the time. In the pipeline, you cannot come in the backward direction. You understand this, right? This is a very important point. So what do I do, sir? I need to use a bubble. A bubble is going to stall the cycle for a few milliseconds so that we can get this push to the next level and the result from here can be moved to one input of the EX of next stage. And this is the symbol that we need to represent bubble. A bubble is nothing but looking like a cloud which will delay, which will stall the operation a little bit, ensuring that the data hazard is not affecting the entire setup on the whole. Do you understand this point? If not, I'll have to repeat again. Can we uh, look into a problem statement? Here, you can see that I have got a C code, A equal to B plus E and C equal to B plus F. Now, the question itself is this one, where I need to extract and I need to write the equivalent MIPS code for it. I may give you that itself as a question, but here, the question is very straightforward. They themselves have given the MAPS equivalent for the above two C instructions. Now, they are trying and they are asking us, do you have any hazard in this entire flow and can you identify the hazard? That's the question. Can we identify that? Very simple. 
when I have this is the question you can see that I have got load word load word add store word load word add store word right so what kind of hazards are there in this whenever you see a load word followed by add that is a hazard why sir just that we have discussed uh, the hazard which is caused by the load word and the add we will not get the result on time because it is available after the mem stage and you cannot push it in the time frame to the push it in the proper time frame to the next instruction so there is a hazard so what do we do sir they are also asking you in the question find the hazards if any in the code segment and try to reorder the instructions of your choice so that you can avoid any hazards now is the question is clear i do not have to stall anything if i reorder i can make it better if i reorder so try to do a reordering which can get the entire setup better now what will happen load word load word there is a definite hazard here store word load word add store word load word after add is again you can see that here we have a possibility of hazard here we have a possibility of hazard here add after load right so both the ads have got hazard now what do we do i am going to mod modify it slightly i will push three load words together this load word should move here and what will happen add word store word add word store word is better this will reduce the stall and the delay will be totally reduced we will not have any pipelining stall here and this won't result in any sort of uh, hazardous situation for the data to be handled that's it we are going to handle control hazards tomorrow and it's very very important again we have got the structural hazard the data hazard and the control hazard to be dealt with full attention we have completed two of them and i hope it is very clear tomorrow we will learn the control hazard